All right. How would you describe Josiah Gray on the day that he pitches and what goes on inside of him? Uh, you know, I just get to the ballpark. My routine's pretty simple. Uh, just trying to uh, be prepared for the opponent. So whether it's scouting them, uh, just looking at old videos against hitters I might have faced, but uh, kind of keep it chill and just go on about my day, do my things, you know, that I've established in my routine and just prepare for each each moment in the day and then get ready to go perform at, at 7 o'clock. What's the intensity like as you step on the rubber for the first time in that start? Oh, it's, it's up there. Uh, you know, it's kind of like it's – building up, building up, building up. And then you finally get to the moment. It's like, all right, here we go. Like, here's our time to, to perform. Uh, so just being able to chat, to channel that is, is really important. And kind of, it, it just sort of builds up because you have four days in between a start and, you know, you have so many hours before you're out there pitching and, uh, it's definitely in there. And, uh, after big moments, it, it comes out. We've seen that for sure. Yeah. What was the athletic life like for a young Josiah Gray growing up in New Rochelle, New York? It was all baseball, uh, you know, from t-ball to travel ball. I joined a travel organization uh, when I was nine years old uh, because my middle brother, he sort of was in the inaugural team. So they created a younger team kind of for my age group. And, you know, from nine to I went to college, I played for the same organization and we were playing spring, summer, fall. And we even had like winter workouts, winter leagues. Uh, it was just all baseball year round, pretty much. No other sport, and um, you know, loved it. I still love it, and uh, it's all I wanted to do every day. Is just you know, whether it's field a ground ball or hit the ball off the tee. Um, it was it was really all I wanted to do. When you're a kid, I was there. You were there. You have fun playing the game, and then there's a point where the competitiveness of comes into play. Mm -hmm. How did you feel that play out in your youth? And when did you really become the true competitor that you feel like you are now? I always had it in me. Uh, you know, my dad would always talk about, uh, you know, when I got angry on the mounds, I always had like an extra, you know, sort of life on the next pitch. So I always had that as a young kid. Uh, but, you know, as baseball got, you know, harder and harder as I grew up, sort of just came with the territory, you know, whether it's a big tournament or, you know, high school playoffs or, you know, college playoffs. It, it kind of just uh, continued to uh, build up and, and sort of channel that. So I've always had it as a young kid, and here we are now, you know, in the major leagues, and it's sort of just stuck with me. I want to take you back to one start from last year, June 18th. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the start I'm talking about? I don't. <laughs> Ryan Zimmerman Day at Nationals Park, 42,000-plus in the mm -hmm. stands. You go out there, you throw six innings, you allow just one hit, mm -hmm. 117 pitches, a career <laughs> high. And after that last pitch that got you out of the sixth inning, you came off the field, you looked up to the sky, and you let out a roar. <laughs> what was that feeling like for you mm -hmm. of going up against a division rival in the Phillies with that many people there Absolutely. watching you, a buzz in the stands, mm -hmm. and you being able to deliver in that way? Man, I think that start was sort of a, um, a really important start for me just because, like you said, so many people in the crowd were honoring Zim, who I played with shortly in, in 2021. Um, you know, we're playing the Phillies, so it's an important matchup. And um, June was actually one of my better months last year. So just trying to keep the streak going that I had there. And just each pitch, you know, I was just locked in. And, um, you know, there were some some – uh, middle innings, you know, I kind of strayed, my command strayed. Mm. But just digging down deep and then going out there for the sixth inning, um, just knowing I had to get three outs for the team. Um, I, don't, I don't remember if we won or lost the game, but um, just wanted to go out there and, and give the team a chance to win. And I know I was facing Nola that day, Aaron yeah. Nola. So, you know, runs are, are slim for us. So just wanted to go out there, give the team a chance, and uh, being able to get that last out, I think Bryson Stott grounded out right back to me. Uh, was just like a, just like a lot of moments through the season, just a, a relief of like, all right, you know, I did my job and um, this is fun. Like I really got to enjoy that. I really got to just, um, you know, put the team first. And each moment that I can do that, you know, whether it's like a small fist pump or you know I'm roaring off the field, it, it all means the same. And just um, being able to do that for the team is is. 
goal number one and, and you know I just love being able to go out there and, and do it at the highest level. The thought of having those environments again, a huge crowd, a meaningful situation, and hopefully down the road we've got a lot of those at Nationals sure. Park. How much do you revel in that and uh, look forward to those moments and being able to deliver for your team, your city, your family and friends, Absolutely. everyone that supports you? Oh, it's, I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, the past two years, we've gotten some uh, really important games down the stretch. You know, whether it's last year, you know, the Braves were competing with the Mets for first place. And 2021, I think the Red Sox needed to, to win two out of three or sweep us to go to the playoffs. So... Uh, being able to be a part of those games and, and pitch well in those games sort of gives you a little taste of what the playoff atmosphere kind of can look like. Mm -hmm. But I'm really looking forward to, you know, being in that, being immersed in that. Say, you know, we're fighting for first place. We're fighting for a wild card. You know, with this group of guys, that's going to be a lot of fun to just go out there and, and see us excel and see us, you know, just prove people wrong and, you know, go out there for the team and, and just do what we know we can do. And I'm really looking forward to that this year, next year, whenever, you know, we kind of get it over that hump and start, you know, whooping some butt. And it's going to be a lot of fun to just uh, kind of be immersed in that and, and just enjoy it. Do you feel like that underdog mentality is ever going to leave you? I don't think so. Uh, you know, I think just with the way, you know, I've grown up and the way, uh, you know, baseball has kind of uh, formulated my, my life, I think it's just, sort of how I've adapted to things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been blessed to, to be in the big leagues the last two years, and um, it's brought uh, an extreme amount of joy. But I think uh, that mentality doesn't leave you because once it does and once you think, you know, you're too good enough or you're, you're complacent and, and just the person you are, I think that's when your, your talent starts to uh, subside. So for me, it's just going in every day knowing that, I can get 1% better every day. I can do this better. I can do that better. I can continue to learn, continue to pitch better. Um, it's going to you know, lead to a long career, and I'm really excited to just work every day and become a better pitcher every day for this team, for myself, for my family, and, and just do all I can because you know careers are short and, and this game is short, so I just want to you know, have a long, fulfilling career and, and kind of do it the best way I can.